Welcome back to Craftsman David. It's that time of year again, folks, when us handymen and woodworkers head out to the garage to pretend to be elves and build all our Christmas gifts. This year, I'm no exception, I built this for my brother. My brother has, has lots of kids, and they all have these learning tools, leapfrogs, and tablets, and Kindles, and stuff that they have to charge. So this is a charging station. In the back, it has a large power source capable of supplying all that power. This first large slot is for laptop computers. You, at least one of them anyway, can sit right there. The second and third slot are for things like leapfrogs and Kindles. And the front is for smaller things like cell phones. That, and then this little ledge is here to keep them from falling off. On the back it has three pegs to hold things like Fitbits, watches that need to be charged. And notice these always have short cords when you buy them so they're real close to the power source. Now on the front, I have two slots, and those are for paper. This is going to sit on top of a desk or a countertop. And if it's anything like my desk, it's got papers all over it. So it's got to clear its own spot. This gives you two spots to put the paper and make a place for this beauty. I have a lot of reclaimed lumber building up in my shop, so I'm going to glue some of these thinner boards together to make my blanks. And because it's reclaimed wood, I have holes on the edge of this piece that I'm going to hide by burying them in the glue joint. After the glue dried, I planed the boards to final thickness. This is where a 15 inch planer really comes in handy. All the glue squeeze out gets planed off as well. Well, check it out. A few passes on the planer and these boards don't look too bad. Definitely project worthy. All of my pieces come out of the same big blank. Just rip it to width on the table saw and use the miter saw to chop each piece. For the joinery on this project, I'm going to use a drawer front bit. What happens is I run the sides of the project on the long fence, and the top and bottom get run on the table going over the bit, and I end up with a locking joint like this, where they just fit together like they were meant to be. Check that out. Well, one difficult thing when using a drawer front bit is chip out. Right here, I had some material chip out even though I was trying to support it with a scrap piece. I'm going to solve that by shortening the whole case by a quarter inch. And I'm going to get that quarter inch back on the back side here. I've milled a groove all the way around for this piece of plywood that's going to go in the back. I originally designed it for half inch thick plywood, so I'll just go to a quarter inch thick, thereby gaining my quarter inch back. The only one that's going to know is you. Don't you feel special? All the pieces are getting cut using the same setting on the table saw. That way they're all identical. And you can't argue with those results. They're going to think I'm a master craftsman. Up next are finger holds. you got to get that paper out. I'm just cutting it out on the drill press and then smoothing it up on the spindle sander. Like this, I'm not going to have access to the inside to sand very well. So sand the pieces before I assemble. <laughs> And here I go on the first glue up. Notice how much this time lapse kind of makes me look like an elf. Now it's time to cut the grooves that support the dividers. I've got the whole stack dado tilted back at 10 degrees, which gives the slope to the dividers. Also notice here that these grooves have to be cut after glue up because the grooves go deep enough that they cut into the joinery. So now I got all my dividers laid out how I want them, and I want to round over these top corners I'm just going to use my bottle of spray adhesive here, put it up to the corner, draw an arc, and I'll cut that out at the bandsaw. I keep forgetting I haven't fixed up my bandsaw yet. Old fashioned way for me. Ugh. You gotta give the old guys credit. Not only did I break my coping saw, I also broke the glass. This old glue joint broke apart when I was pulling down. Oh well, that's the wonderful thing about wood. Just glue it back together. Well, after I put these dividers into their dados, I want to have screws come from the underside. That's why I didn't put the shelf in, so that I could get in there. So to do that, I'm going to drill the holes from the top side so they'll be in the perfect spot. I'll do three of them, middle and one on near each end. Here I go on glue up number two. Notice that this assembly didn't go quite as well. I have too tight of a joint between the dividers and the grooves. 
so I'm really having to hammer and clamp a lot just to get the dividers to bottom out in the groove. Yeah, don't make your videos that tight. Well, after that ordeal, I've made sure I have plenty of clearance for this middle shelf. Check that out. With that clamp, I was able to close the gap on both sides. Perfect joint. And up here is where cell phones are going to sit. I don't really want them to get knocked off the front like that, so I want to put some kind of a lip on the front of this. And I'm going to mill that ledge out of this piece of scrap wood. I want to have a quarter by quarter inch blank, and that's pretty small. So I recommend that if you're going to cut something like that on your table saw, you get something like this. This is the Micro Jig Gripper. They don't pay me to endorse me or in any way, but I do really like this thing for small chunks of wood going through the table saw. It keeps your hands clear. And now I'm going to put a little round over profile on one of these quarter inch strips. I've used feather boards here because again the material is so thin that to hold it onto the table I'd have to get my hands right in here. So the feather boards are helping to keep me safe. Well, quite honestly, the profile didn't turn out perfect, but I got a profile sanding block that's the same radius. So I'm going to just use that to sand it into shape. So now back here at the table saw, I've adjusted everything and I'm ready to cut my profile free. Now that this front edge has had a chance to set, I'll trim it up with a hand saw. Now for the final piece of carpentry, I'm drilling the holes for the dowel pins on the back to sit in. Notice that I have my project supported so that I can drill straight down. For the finish on this project, I went dark. This is an American chestnut stain. It helps hide some of the imperfections from the reclaimed wood, as well as bring out the beauty in that oak. Well, the first coat of polyurethane went on okay. It was a little tough trying to get in here with the sponge brush and coat these internal surfaces. In doing so, I pulled a little bit too much finish at the bottom of this, and then after, when I left after I was done, it dripped. So this is ugly. We, you can't have dripping on your finish. To fix that, I've got a scraper with a plastic razor blade in it, and I'm going to try to scrape as much of that as possible. See how that sort of lifts that right off the surface? Now with those big pools scraped off, I'm going to take very fine sandpaper. This is like 220. Take this back down, not quite all the way to the wood. I'm not completely sure if this will disappear with the next coat of finish, but it's better than drips, so we'll see. All gone. Nice smooth surface. You can't even tell those drips were there after this just one extra coat. Now for some finishing touches. Four rubberized feet will keep this from sliding around the countertop. And the back panel goes on. And here's the final piece that transforms this from a letter holder into a charging station. This power strip has six outlets on it and eight USB ports. I got it at Amazon.com, I ordered it, and then I drew up the dimensions of this charging station based on the size of this. What I like most about this is that it has eyelets on it, so I can put the screws right through those and mount it to the project real easy. Arg, this power strip was not designed ideally for this. It's nice that it has these tabs so you can use to fasten it down with a screw, but it also has feet on the underside and the tab does not sit flush with the feet. So when you put a screw and you start pushing down, it just puts a tremendous amount of stress on that tab. It's a good way to break it off. I have here a washer. It's just the perfect thickness to fit under here, so when I tighten it up, the washer can brace this little tab and I won't break it off. There we go. This project was a lot of fun to build and I do have a free set of basic plans available in the description. Just click down there. Until next time, thanks for watching and Merry Christmas.